Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second video in the Source Control with S-Code series. In this video, our focus will be on creating our ratings view and then staging and committing our view to our Git repository. I'll also introduce you to a new Git command, the Git log, and I'll show you how you can amend a previous commit. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. As this is a hands-on series exploring Git and Xcode, it isn't really practical to provide you with a completed project for this video to start with. There's not a lot of code involved, so I highly recommend that you go back to the previous video and create and commit the project that we are building to create a custom ratings view. We're going to be starting from there in this video. In the previous video, we discovered that if when we are creating a new project in Xcode, we select the Create Git Repository on my Mac option, Xcode will not only initialize your project, but also bring all of the files under source control using a commit. We also learned that we could do this after the fact in Xcode if we failed to have that option checked by selecting the New Git Repository from the Integrate menu. In addition, we learned how we can do that entire process of initializing Git, staging files, and committing them manually from the command line. So that's where we are right now in this project. Basically, it's a generic new Xcode app, but all the files have been committed to be under source control. From now on, Xcode should be tracking all changes we make. So let's start by creating our new ratings view. We'll create a new Swift UI file, and I'm going to call it ratings view. As soon as we do that, in the navigation sidebar, you'll notice two things. The overall app now has an M, and our new file has an A beside it. A means that it's been added, and it's new, and it's been staged, but not yet committed. M stands for modified, where we have a committed file with changes in the working copy, but it hasn't been staged, so we'll get to that in a little bit. What is important to know is that when we create a new file in Xcode, it gets added. Remember the git add command? And staged at the same time, ready for a commit. The change that you see here for our app is actually the project.pbxproj file that is responsible for storing information about your project's structured settings and build configurations. Any change whatsoever in your project, whether it be changing code, adding or deleting a file, changing some build settings or anything will result in modifications to your project. So it's important that we make sure that this file is always committed along with all of your other changes. So if you go to the source control navigator now, you'll see that our project is listing those two uncommitted changes. One's the project file and the other is our new ratings view. The solid green A means that our ratings view has been added and staged ready for a commit. The open square M means that the project file has some changes, but it hasn't yet been staged. If you right click on the project.pbxproj file and choose stage changes, it changes to a solid blue background M. And now since all two changes have been solid background, we could execute a commit to Git. Well, I'm not gonna do that right now though. So let's right click on it again and unstage those changes because there'll be more. Now, if you right click on the ratings view, you'll see that there is an option to unstage because as I said, a solid background means that it has already been staged. We'll see the impact of unstaging changes in the later on. So let's return to the ratings view and start coding. To begin with, let's create a ratings view that will allow us to specify a maximum rating, which is an int, and a current rating, which is another int. And since our code will be mutating this value and this view will be presented in another view, we need to make that current rating a binding. And then to stop the preview from complaining, I'll need to provide arguments to the ratings view in the preview macro. And I like to separate my arguments, so I'm going to use that control M to place them on different lines. And I'll use a value of five for the max rating. And since current rating is a binding, let's start by using a constant of two. 
and we're going to fix this later. Notice that there is now a blue bar to the left of the line numbers indicating that you've made changes to your code. If you're not seeing these lines, make sure that you go to the Xcode settings in the Source Control tab, and in general, make sure Show Source Control Changes is checked. If you click on one of these lines, you have the ability to stage the change, which means on the next commit, this update will get saved in Git, or discard changes. I'm going to choose Stage Change on that first block, and you'll see that the blue line disappears, but not the one in the Ratings view. In this case, then, we would only be saving the updates to Ratings view and not the preview. If you go to the Source Control Navigator now, you'll see that the A is solid, but there is now also an open M indicating that there are some modifications to that file that have not yet been staged. And we can see that code here, as well as where I can stage this block of code here now, too, if I like. When I do that, the open M disappears, and I'm left with a solid A for the newly added file. It has been added, and all changes so far have been staged. Now, normally, we would stage an entire file all at once, and I'll get to that. But it was worth knowing that you can stage only parts of a file if you want. We will build our ratings view by creating a horizontal stack of stars one for each of the possible ratings up to the max number of ratings. And if the number in the stack is less than or equal to the current ratings, we'll use a filled star, otherwise it will be unfilled. But before we do that set of stars, I want to add one before the stack that will be a star with a slash through it, so that if I tap on it, it will reset the current rating back to zero. So let's start with that first one by replacing the text view with an H stack. Inside there, create an image using the system name star. Then make it resizable and scaled to fit. And let's set a foreground color of the color yellow. Now, yes, I know this is deprecated, but I want to show you something a little bit later. So I'm going to use a deprecated foreground color instead of foreground style. And then I'm going to set the symbol variant to slash. And then because we only want to display the slash star if our current rating is not zero, we can set an opacity where if our current rating is equal to zero, we can set it to zero, else it'll be one. Next then within the H stack, we can use a for each loop to iterate from zero up to, but not including the max ratings, where the ID is self. And this will give us a ratings iterator, a number or an int, that we can use to create a new view. Well, we can take the first four lines from above to create a star again, that same foreground color. But the symbol variant will change depending on whether or not the rating is less than the current rating. And if it is, we'll use dot fill otherwise none. Now if you go down to the preview, you'll see that there is a slash star at the beginning, followed by two filled stars, and three empty ones, because our current rating has been set to two, and five is the max rating. Well, if we set the current rating to zero, the slash disappears, and all the stars are unfilled. If we set the current rating to five, all the stars are filled. So let's switch it back to two. Well, now we need to add some tap gestures to the stars to make this interactive. So on the first star with the slash variant, we'll create an on tap gesture. And then within an animation block, we'll simply set the current rating back to zero. We're gonna have a tap gesture with animation for our other block, but this time we'll set the current rating to be equal to the rating tapped on plus one. And let's also set the frame here to have a width of 150. Now this preview isn't interactive because I used a constant of two. And I'd like in the preview to be able to interact with this current rating. So 
In the preview macro then, we can create a preview wrapper that is a view. And a view requires a body. Well, I'm going to provide it with two properties. One is going to be the max reading that I'm going to assign at five. And then instead of using a binding for current reading, I'm going to use a state property. And I'll provide an initial value of two. And then in the body, we can move up our ratings view into the body, but then provide the max reading property for the max reading and bind the current reading to that state property. Then finally, we'll need to return the preview wrapper for our macro. Let's go back to content view now and use this ratings view. So I'm going to create a state property for current rating and I'll initialize it as zero. Notice the blue code change. And this time there is an M beside the file, meaning that there are modifications. And if we go to the source control navigator for the changes, you'll see that there is an open M and it's not filled, meaning that there are unstaged changes. Back in content view, I'm going to replace the contents of the body with a ratings view. Again, control M to separate these onto separate lines. And I'll pass in a constant max rating of five, but bind the current rating to our state current rating property. And when I test this in the view, it's looking pretty good. But what if I want to have 10 stars? So all I have to do is change the max rating to 10. This isn't so good though, because the frame has been set to a fixed value of 150 in my view. And after a bit of experimenting, I realized that we should be able to pass in a value that will allow us to adjust the frame and thus the size of the stars. So this means that we'll need a new property in our ratings view. So I'm going to return to ratings view. And I'm going to call this new property width. Well, I want to give it a default value, but I also want to allow people to provide a different value when they're creating the view. Well, this means I'll need to create an initializer for the ratings view struct. And I'll let Xcode generate that for me. The initializer isn't correct though, because current rating is not an int, it's a binding to an int. So we'll need to change that initializer here to a binding to an int and change this self.current reading to self.underscore current reading. We're getting an error in our preview because we've added a new property in the initializer and it's expecting a value for width. But as I said, I wanted the default. So I can return to the initializer here now and add one to the initializer for width. And I'm going to specify a width of 30. And then we can calculate the width by creating a CG float for our frame by multiplying the max rating by the width. If I return to content view now, we see that the ratings looks much better now. However, if we want to change that, we can. I'm going to comment out ratings view. And when I create a new one, I see that there are two different initializers. The one we had that has a default width, but this second one that we can use to apply a different width value. So we'll set the max rating to 10 again and bind current rating to current rating, but let me set the width to say 25. And you see that the ratings become much smaller. Let me set the max rating then back to 5, but change the custom width to 40 to increase the size of our stars. That's looking pretty good. Well, this is looking great. So we have completed this initial view. So we want to commit it to our repository and then possibly use it in other projects. We've got lots of changes. So from the integrate menu, we can choose commit. And you'll see that there are modifications now to all three files, but none have been staged, so we can't commit yet. 
Now I could scroll down and stage each block individually. Or what I can do is I can click on the Stage All button. Notice now that all three files have solid background letters. The Commit button though is still inactive because we need to add a comment. Your comment should reflect the type of commit that you're doing, and your organization may have an opinion on this as well. I'm going to call this a feature, and I'm just going to use FEAT with a colon to represent a feature, and then a general comment as to what it is. So it's recommended that you start with a title line. So I'm going to call this a feature and just use the FEAT acronym for all my features, followed by a colon, and then what this is, and it's a added star ratings view. Now, since this is the first commit for this and I want to have a better description, I'm going to add a description following this title line by first creating a blank line and then following this with a full description of my commit. So let me just speed through this so that I'm not uh, taking your time up by watching me typing. Well, the commit button is visible now, so we can commit it. And when we do this, all changes are removed. If we go back to the Repositories tab, we see that the commit has been added above the initial commit. And if you double-click on it, you get to see each view along with the changes that were made in each view. For example, here in Content View, we see the old code followed by the new code. The project file is something that is beyond the scope of this series, but we can jump down to the ratings view, and there are no changes being displayed because everything was changed. It's a brand new file. Well, I'm just about ready to use this in my projects, and I want to be able to share this file with others. But when I return to content view, I see that I left that commented code in. I don't need people to see that commented code. We should remove it. As soon as I do that, though, I see that there's a change in the contents of the file, and my last commit is no longer the current source code. As this is not really a change in code, it's just a little bit of a cleanup, I simply want to amend my commit. So first I have to stage the changes, though, either here or by tapping on Stage All. And then I can click this Amend switch, and notice that the preview comment appears, and I can edit it here because I see that I have a typo. And now I can click on the Amend button to update my previous commit. If I go to the repositories now, I see that there is no new commit. We simply updated that last one, or amended it. And if we go to Finder, just so that we don't forget how to use Git in a terminal, I'm going to right-click on the path of the project root folder and open it in Terminal to create a new terminal window session. And then I can use the git log command and see that I get that commit along with a comment and details printed to the terminal console. And below that I get that first commit, the initial one. Okay, so then in this video we created our view. And that is almost all of the code that we're going to be doing in this series for a little while, except for some changes to the ratings view. And it's not going to take a lot of code, but we're going to do that on a different branch. But we always will have to update and commit our changes. So in this video, we learned about staging and unstaging commits and amending commits. In the next video, we'll branch from this main branch that we're working on to create a development branch and a new feature. In the meantime, I also want to continue working on this main branch and fix up some issues I may have, like that foreground style. So we'll need to find out how we can merge those changes in with a new branch that we're creating. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you're notified when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.